this series we are going to move to the next concepts related to association analysis in the previous uh, series um, we had analyzed the various concepts the basic concepts related to association analysis and the basic terminologies related to association analysis so the topic related to association analysis part two series is association rule mining task and this association rule mining task is actually a very long procedure uh, so i have just planned to divide uh, the whole uh, rule mining task into subtopics and i am covering individual topics in individual video recordings so to start with we need to know how the association rules are getting formulated what is meant by association rule mining problem and what is the basic definition of association rule mining or discovery so in the previous series that is in part 1 we got to know what is meant by association rule in fact i stopped with the last topic where i have mentioned any association rule is going to be represented by an antecedent and a consequent wherein the antecedent is nothing but the left hand side and the consequent is the outcome or the result so when it comes to the antecedent part it is those items from the set of items which are going to determine some other item so the determined item is going to be the consequent over there so the basic definition of association rule mining or discovery so why this terminology as mining or discovery again as i mentioned in the previous series whatever association rules have been derived by making use of various algorithms we cannot jump into a conclusion that all the rules are perfect there should be some mechanism in order to validate that a particular rule is perfect among the set of rules that have been discovered and that is the reason we try to perform this association rule mining problem we try to figure out which association rule is best suited among the ones that has been identified so the basic definition of the association rule mining goes like this so when we have a set of transaction t okay we need to find all the rules having support and confidence greater than or equal to certain threshold value so what is uh, support and confidence mean we have already seen this um, the definition we have covered it so support and confidence are something related to the number of transactions in which the lhs part the combination of the items of the rules in the lhs part is going to exist or rather the combination of items what we have figured out through the rules it is going to exist so we need to get to know in how many transactions right we will be able to see this particular item set so if that combination is going to exist in multiple transactions then obviously the discovered rule has some value similarly the confidence lies in if i try to tell x determines y is an association rule then confidence measures how frequently the item y is going to exist in all transactions wherever x is present so this is the basic definition so given a set of transaction t okay we are trying to find out the rules having support greater than or equal to minimum support this has to be read as minimum support value and this has to be read as minimum confidence value so we need to figure out support greater than or equal to min sub and confidence greater than or equal to minimum confidence so for every association rule mining problem we are going to first calculate the support and confidence this is a default calculation which will be done so having given a set of transaction i try to apply some approach and i try to derive the association rule having derived the association rule first thing we try to do is calculating the support and confidence with respect to formulas 
So please refer part one for the formulas. So using those formulas, I try to derive the values. Having derived the values, I try to check out if the values are greater than the threshold. So how this particular threshold is going to be fixed? For example, it, it's again a sort of test and trial or some uh, prior knowledge about the transactions in hand. So one example can be uh, considered like, if suppose I have some 20 to 25 transactions for say. So out of 25 transaction, if I want to figure out if the rule is appropriate or not, I might fix the minimum support value to be somewhere around um, 18 or 90. So if suppose that particular combination, association rule, okay, through the association rule, the combination of items, what we have identified, if it is existing, okay, more than 18 transactions, that means it is highly reliable. So I can depend upon that particular association rule. So that is what we called as a threshold, a particular value which we are trying to fix in order to gauge the appropriateness of the association rule. Yes. So in order to perform the so-called association rule mining, so what is mining here? Nothing but trying to validate that this particular association rule is perfect. I am trying to dig and I am trying to find out whether this is appropriate. I have, for example, from a problem in hand, I have uh, bought around uh, 200 or 2000 association rules. In some approach, I have landed up in 2000 association rules. So how can I uh, come to a conclusion? Out of 2000, how many are appropriate? How many can be relied upon? How many can be used to handle my problem or improve my business? So, in order to validate that, what operations I'm trying to carry out is nothing but association rule mining. Yes. So, I have just given a small uh, picturization in order to understand the flow, especially with respect to the prescribed textbook. Okay. In this chapter, um, it's like a continuous uh, textual content. So, in order to get a flow of what is happening, what are the various operations carried out in order to perform this association rule mining? I have come out with this diagram. So I believe this diagrammatic representation gives a better picturization about the flow of that whole association rule mining task. So initially to start with, our aim is nothing but to perform association rule mining. So in order to perform that, we try certain approaches. And by default, when it comes to data mining, by default, the basic approach, what we try to apply in any sort of problem would be brute force approach. So brute force is very, very simple and direct. Brute force is just giving a shot directly. Okay, we are not trying to minimize, we are not trying to maximize the data in hand. We try to do it in a appropriate traditional uh, method. We know something, this is how association rule has to be derived as we follow the same technique. We don't try to minimize, we don't try to concentrate upon computation time here. We don't try to concentrate upon the complexity involved in doing that, no. So brute force is a very, very direct approach. So the first thing what we are going to consider here is the brute force approach in order to validate the association rule. So thereby, after understanding that, we will get to know what are the drawbacks related to this so-called brute force approach. So having understood what are the drawbacks in brute force approach, it will be very easy for us to get to know why we go for the next steps ahead. For example, frequent item set generation, rule generation, nothing to worry. So step by step by step, I will be explaining the concepts. Yes, so as I mentioned just now, in order to perform this association rule mining task, the first approach considered is nothing but the brute force approach. So when it comes to brute force approach, the approach is very, very simple and direct. We are just trying to list all the possible association rules. We are just taking the combination of items present in the transactions and we are considering everything as an association rule. For example, if I have five items for say in uh, my item domain, please understand I'm talking about item domain over here. So if I have some five items, immediately I try to take a combination of all those items and see in which all transaction it is present, right? So along with these combinations, what other item from my domain of item is existing? So it's a long procedure. So I just try to list all possible association rules. So having listed all the possible association rules, for example, from this diagram, it will be very clear. See, 
I have this is my transaction database. Okay, my market basket database. So what I have tried to do here is I'm trying to pick out the combinations. So for example, milk comma diaper. It is a set of combination of the item. Similarly, milk comma beard, diaper comma beard, beard, diaper, milk goes on. So for every item, I am trying to figure out what would be the consequent. This is what we are trying to do here. So there is no hot, uh, sh shortcut method or anything. So we are just trying to figure out the approach. So what is happening over here is, as I mentioned, we are just computing the support and confidence of each rule. So having identified all possible association rules, we are trying to compute the support and confidence of every rule. So for each and every rule, we are trying to figure out the support and confidence. As I told, we'll be applying the formulas over there. Thereafter, since uh, we all know that, now the support and confidence value has to satisfy the min sub and min confidence value. As we have seen over here, the support and confidence value should be greater than or equal to the min support and the min confidence value. Having calculated everything means the support and confidence for every rule, I go for comparing those support and confidence values with the respective min support and min confidence threshold. So only if my support and confidence value is greater than or equal to threshold, I consider those rules. If not, I go for removing that particular rule. So I repeat, if the support and confidence value of the particular rule derived, if it is greater than or equal to min sub and min confidence threshold, if it is satisfying that alone, I try to retain the rule. If not, we go for removing the rule. That removing operation is termed as pruning. We prune the rules. So what is a major drawback related to this approach of brute force? So the major drawback is as uh, as we are able to analyze or try to understand till now, we get to know all the rules has to be derived in variable of whether it is going to be useful or not. For example, if my domain of item has around uh, 1 million data for say, this I keep on repeating in many sessions. So if it is data mining, we are concentrating on voluminous amount of data. So for example, if my data base has 1 million data, then just imagine for 1 million data, we sit and derive all possible rules. Thereafter, we go for pruning. So it's highly expensive. And uh, next important problem is a set of rules which are extracted, 90% of the rules would literally go waste. It won't be useful. It will just go, it will be waste. So the number of possible rules that are extracted from the data set, it can be represented by this formula, 3 power d minus 2 power d plus 1 plus 1. So wherein d is nothing but the number of items in the data set over there. Yes, so if you just consider here, that is what the same market basket database, if you consider the basic, basically if you see the number of items in the domain is nothing but 6. So what happens if I apply the rule formula, I get to know we can generate up to 602 rules. And in this scenario, if I place the condition as the minimum support and minimum confidence, what we are considering is 20% and 50%. When the calculations are being applied, we get, get to know 80% of the rules are discarded after applying this constraint of minimum support and minimum confidence. So the initial task of generating 602 rules has to happen. If we are considering brute force approach. After generating 602 rules only, we go for applying the formula of min support and min confidence and we try to prune the rules. So this is like unnecessary computing, computations. It's like waste, total waste of computations, total waste of memory spaces over the inefficient manner of utilizing the computer performance. So first and foremost approach, what we take in order to overcome this problem is we can try to concentrate on either support or confidence initially. See, why this is happening is, for example, if you see, um, anyways, we'll try to recollect the definition of support now. What is the definition of support? We get to know support of a rule 
x determines y depends only on the support of its corresponding items in x union y which means the combination of the items from lhs and right rhs of the rule has to be present in my data set then only i tell it achieves the maximum support value so the rules that are made up of items that belong to the same item set will have the same support value which means if suppose x is present y is also present in the transaction then x union y can be expected so the support okay it is going to depend upon the number of items present in that particular rule but when it comes to confidence it's quite different confidence value won't be the same across so we can just take this example as i was mentioning when i consider milk comma diaper okay determines beard similarly milk comma beard determines diaper so all this all these combinations of values when we see we get to know the support is 0.4 only so support remains the same i'm just trying to repeat this concept so the support for the rule okay depends upon the support of the combination of the items so when i consider rule with certain items in lhs and certain item in rhs the combination of these two items existing in the data set is going to determine the support so support if you calculate and see you will get to know you need to calculate of course to understand the support with the point for throughout so if the item set is infrequent then it's understood all the six candidate rules can be thrown immediately which means i'm just considering this example for say wear diapers comma milk so when i take this combination when i tell Beard uh, determines milk comma diaper. If you see from here, okay, I'm trying to tell beard determines milk comma diaper. Diaper determines milk and beard, and milk determines diaper comma bread. So what happens over here is when I'm considering these three items as a combination x union y. So x might be anything. For example, beer comma diapers determining milk or milk comma beer determining diaper or milk comma diaper determining beer. Okay, so x can x determining y. The combination can be anything over here. But finally, from these rules, we understand these three rules also you can take initially. from these three rules we understand if i take a combination of x union y it is nothing but beer comma diapers comma milk so when i take this combination x union y and when i calculate the support okay i will get to know the support count value together it's going to be very easy for me so if that support is greater than or equal to my min support right then only i go for considering all these rules if not blindly i can discard it's understood it's a basic understanding so what happens over here is if these values that is x union y value is not satisfying my basic support count value then by default i go for pruning the rules i need not even go for generating those rules it's understood which means with these combination of items from my domain of item right for these three values together when i try to calculate the support count if the value is less than the min support then it is understood what all rules i am going to generate from these three values it is not going to satisfy my support count value so once a particular item set obviously we know this is nothing but an item set so once a particular item set is infrequent then how many ever rules you try to generate okay from that item set it can be just blindly Room. we need not consider those rules at all yes but what happens in brute force approach it doesn't apply all this it tries to generate all the rules calculate the support then only it goes for pruning the rules over there so the major drawback of the brute force approach is to calculate right the major drawback is trying to calculate the support for all the rules over there so how it can be overcome how this particular problem can be overcome the brute force approach drawback can be overcome is in order to understand that only i mentioned this concept over here right you consider an item set based on the support of that particular item set we go for determining to derive the rules or not 
so the drawback of brute force approach is overcome first and foremost by decomposing the problem into two major tasks first one is frequent item set generation so out of all the item set what is an item set combination of items in this manner what are item which is present in the transaction over there so the domain of item so from the domain of item i try to create subsets i try to create combination of those item those are nothing but my item sets very simple so from those set of items in hand from those item set first and foremost i try to predict frequent item set i don't go for generating the rules in one shot so first i consider all the items from my domain having all the items from the domain i go for creating the subsets of the item which are going to be called as item set then out of those item set i try to pick out frequent item set of course by considering our minimum support threshold next using these frequent item set when i try to determine the association rule again we did we have just left out the confidence factor till now so using the frequent item set when i go for generating the association rule for those association rule i try to apply the confidence constraint if those association rules satisfy the confidence constraint then since a specific set of rules are satisfying both support and confidence those rules will be determined as strong rules so in order to overcome the drawback of brute force approach only we are moving into frequent item set generation as i just mentioned in the diagram so association rule mining we have covered what is brute force approach and we have seen what are the drawbacks of brute force approach so in order to overcome the drawback only we go for dividing the whole task into two problem sets now we decomposing the problem problem into two major sub tasks one is going to be frequent item set generation what i mentioned just now next is rule generation and as i told when i go for determining out of those many rules which has been derived using the frequent item set which are strong rules in order to predict that i'll be using confidence value over here so please be very clear with one thing with respect to all the techniques used in this portion of the diagram we are going to concentrate only on support only on support now in this portion we don't concentrate upon confidence after having generated appropriate rules using several algorithm of course from the frequent item set there after only we go for concentrating on confidence in order to determine the strong rules yes so frequent item set generation and the related topic has been continued in the next series that is part 3 thank you